this is voxel time people and i'm very happy about this because this is the second video i'm doing about rpg in a box which is a very cool tool and engine and after doing the first video i wanted to do something in a more organized manner and that's why i made this video and i promise you that after watching this one you're gonna have the tools and insights to make something simple but fun like this very simple but cool game But before we get into it, remember that you can support this channel by joining the Patreon and also getting the American Redbubble. Also, if you wanna interact with me, you can follow me on Twitch as I will be constantly live streaming about making games and playing games. So there's that now, people. Okay, end of commercial break. Let's get into it. Here it goes. Eight practical tips to easily make games in RPG in a box. Tip number one. Import models from the in-engine asset library. Yes, there is an in-engine asset library. This is the easiest and most obvious way to get a head start on making your games look great. So let's see how it works. We can find the asset library tab on the top of the UI. When we click it, we see a window in which we can find all sorts of models that can be imported individually or by groups into your game project. This is all made by the community of the engine. I wanted to find a player character with smoother animations, so I went with this female model created by Skumleren. After you import it, you only need to go into the game configuration and set up that model as the player character. You can go into playtest mode to see how the model looks. See, I was just a couple of clicks away from getting a cool character into my game. Tip number two, import models from the web in Vox format. So the in-engine library offers all sorts of stuff, but maybe that isn't enough for you or you wanna find something that is different from what it offers. So you can do that. There are all sorts of models that you can find on the web. So let's see what I'm talking about. You can go into a website like Edge in which you can find free models like these dystopian characters. I got this model, which is like a cyberpunk police officer you only need to drag and drop it into the engine and set it as a character so you can start using it as an enemy right away. You can even change up the attributes of the model or edit it in the voxel editor. Remember, these are all vox format models. After that, you only need to place them into the world. The engine will set up some kind of movement for them inside the map. See, now we've got enemies inside our game. Tip number three, build your own voxel model from scratch in other software like Magicka Voxel. So remember, voxels are a universal language and RPG in a box speaks this language. Maybe you like the tools of other software maybe you like the workflow maybe it's easier for you so no problem rpg in a box understands that this is magica voxel a very cool and easy to use voxel editor which is also free i was thinking that i wanted to make a cool looking futuristic tree to give a better aesthetic to the environment i started building it bit by bit in a kind of artistic sculpting manner this is where the power of this software lies in it's really fun to use After I got comfortable with the tree that I wanted, I exported it as box format and brought it into RPG in a box. It's as easy as the previous model that I showed you. I started adding some color details to this tree, but I also decided that I wanted to have a very simple animation that resembled wind blowing the tree. It's very simple, it's just two frames in which voxels move side to side. 
I know it isn't much hard work, but makes your plants look much better. After that, you only need to place the trees on the world and set up entities ID for each one, and then you can trigger the animation through code on a script that is called on startup. See, now we're in some kind of African savanna. Tip number 4. Model your own weapons and use them in no time with attachments. So the easiest way to give some personality and character to the player is giving him or her a better weapon. So it's really easy to do that in RPG in a box. Let's see how we can do it. For this one, I decided to use the built-in voxel editor. I created a spirit made of diamond, that's why it's blue. Then, with just a couple clicks, you can set up the attach point of this object that will go into the hand of the character. After that, you only need to go into the items editor and set up the new item and set it as equipable and as a weapon. Don't forget to add a weapon tag to this kind of object so they can be automatically attached to the player. I'm setting this one to be equipped by default when you start up the game and setting it to be attached to the right hand of the player character. This is a very easy process to make all sorts of weapons for your game. Tip number 5. Use the effects editor to make some magic. Maybe you wanna make your weapons even cooler, so you can put some magic onto them. RPG in a Box has its own built-in effects editor and it's very easy to use and very powerful. Let me show you how it works. Ok, so what if I decide I'm adding a new effect? something like a magical flame that will go into the tip of the spear weapon. You can play with all sorts of settings to create whichever type of particle animations that you want. It's really fun and it works flawlessly. This is one of those features that makes a software so much better and fun. Then you can go back into your weapon and create a new attach point. Here, you can easily set up the effect position, size, and rotation to suit the needs of the object you are using. See, now we've got a very cool looking magical spear. Let's go into killing enemies. Tip number 6. Turn your game into a turn-based RPG with the combat editor. So, making any character into an enemy and setting up battles is extremely easy in RPG in a box. You are just a couple of clicks away from having a turn-based RPG. I'll show you. Finally, we're getting into fighting against enemies. This is the combat editor and it's very easy to use. You can set up your enemies here and add them into the battle that you want. I'm setting this battle as a text-based turn-based battle, but you can also use tactical turn-based battles inside RPG in a box. Then, you only need to go into your enemy entity properties and call on this battle when the player interacts or gets close to this enemy. In the battle editor, you can even set up a different map exclusively for the battle screen. This is a really neat feature. All the turn-based UI and mechanics are set up by the engine, but we can tinker with all sorts of settings to make them more exciting. You can even go back into the battle map that you are using and keep editing as you want. In my case, I decided to edit the one I was using to make it look more immersive and make it work better with the camera position of the battle. Building battles in RPG in a box is very easy and can make your game so much more enticing and fun. Tip 
Tip number seven, turn your game into an action RPG. Maybe you wanna add a bit of more adrenaline into the gameplay. With just a switch of a button, you can turn any enemy into a very cool AI that follows you, attacks you, and that you can attack back in real time. It's really cool. This one is very easy. You just need to select your enemy entity, go into the properties and set up this one as attackable in real time. This adds some sort of attacking AI into the enemy and you can start fighting against it right away. It's so much fun and can add so much more action into your game. Let's see how it works. See, with just a couple of clicks, we turn this game into an exciting action RPG. Really neat, right? Tip number eight, play around with changing maps. There are all sorts of things that you can do in RPG in a box to make your games better. But the easiest and best one of all is changing maps. With just one line, one function in any script, you can trigger that your player goes to another world, another level, or whatever that comes to your mind so you can extend the story of your game. Don't believe me? See it for yourself. So I built up this portal in the voxel editor and set it as an interactive object that triggers a script that displays a message and sends the player character into another map. The script editor is like the easiest one to use as you only need to drag and drop stuff to make things work. I also wanted this portal object to appear only after I defeated an enemy. I just need to set up a script that is triggered on the on death event in the enemy entity properties. All of this together is really starting to take shape like a small phone game. Let's see how we go into the next map throughout the portal. Really cool, right? If you just put all the pieces together, you are going to start making very cool looking games on RPG in a box. It's a very powerful and fun to use engine. I'm always having so much fun building games with RPG in a box and I think this speaks to the power of the engine and the love that has been put behind the building of the engine and the ease of use that it offers is second to none compared to all the other engines that I have tried and it's such a cool tool you'll have lots of fun with it go and try it as soon as you can and thanks for watching that be all for today don't forget to subscribe see you later